What is going on everyone? So before we get rolling with this week's video, just a quick announcement to make. My 2019 portfolio box set is now available for pre-order. You'll find a link to it down below in the show notes. This is a collection of my best work from 2019 and it's an edition of 150 copies. And at the time of recording this video, 30 copies have already sold and I am incredibly grateful for those of you guys who've already ordered a copy of it. It's gonna be shipping in late November after I get back from my fall trip to Zion, so I'll be able to include a few photos from that trip as well. So again, there's information down below in the show notes if you guys have any questions about that. And the two photos we're gonna be looking at this week when we talk about composition, they are included in this year's box set. So hope you guys enjoy this week's video. In this week's video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about composition, kind of similar to what we did a couple weeks back where we looked at some photos from the spring trip. Uh, in this case, we're gonna look at two photos from my winter trip. So this being one of them right here from Death Valley, and then this over here being one from Zion National Park. So I'm gonna talk about the composition, sort of what was going through my mind as I was setting them up, and sort of how it all kind of worked out in the end. So this particular photo here in Death Valley, there's probably about three or four bushes that could be good candidates to use as a foreground element here. And ultimately I decided on this one because the shape is relatively symmetrical. And for me, this was quite important because if you look at these mountains off in the distance, you got four main peaks right there. And there's a lot of symmetry going on back there. Um, sort of as a group, they kind of form this nice shape right here. But each individual peak, um, they're not exact duplicates of each other, but there's definitely some symmetry going along there. And I knew that I need to have really a symmetrical sort of bush here in the foreground to help kind of balance that out. Now, oftentimes I'll put a bush kind of in the lower right corner because that seems to be a good spot for a lot of, you know, a lot of compositional elements. But in this case, since we have this really strong symmetry going on in the background, I knew I needed to center this bush in the foreground, sort of draw some parallels between the two of them. And if you look at the bottom of this bush right here, this shape right here is not all that much different from the top shape right there. So there is a little bit of symmetry there, which is interesting. Another, another thing that's kind of interesting, I'm sort of noticing this a little bit more after the fact. If you look at the color of this desert holly bush, you have a, kind of like this faint green, sort of faded green color with some sort of yellow highlights there. And then if we scroll up to the mountains, you'll see that we actually have some very similar colors. There are some greens kind of in there in the sediment, uh, some sort of yellows. Um, and also some more uh, neutral tones, kind of like you find in some of the, uh, the dead parts of the bush there. So it's kind of interesting where the colors themselves are sort of drawing these subjects together. But I knew I needed the center of the bush because it gives not only a, um, it kind of complements the mountains in the background, but also it gives a really nice sense of calm, which I think was really important because uh, you have this really harsh desert environment, but during the evenings, it's really nice and calm there. I really want to portray that feeling of being there. Um, along with the sort of sense of calm, so this cracked mud here, um, whenever you have sort of repeating textures, it also kind of gives a sense of calm and gives a sense of balance. So I think between the cracked mud, the centered bush, and then the mountains here in the background, I think it sort of does portray the sense of calm that I felt as I was standing there. Uh, a couple things to notice here, so if you look at this distance over here on the right side, so if you come just be on the right side of this mountain there, compared to this distance over here, they're, they're fairly similar. So I was trying as much as I could to sort of center those mountains visually within the composition. And if we look at the space down here in the bottom, I always try to add a little extra space, a little more than I feel is necessary, because by the time I get it actually onto the computer, um, that feels like the right amount. So if I was composing this for what I felt was necessary at the time, it'd probably be a little bit more like right here but as you see here, that it would probably feel like it's a little cut off. So I include a little more foreground than I felt was necessary. Another thing too, which is really important in an area like Death Valley, is you have all these sort of false horizons um, caused by all the debris that kind of comes down from the mountains there, where this slope back here, um, I composed it where this is very visually level, but that's actually not representative of what truly is level. So if I'd used a bubble level to uh, compose this scene and kind of set my level based on that, you'd see that this right here would be strongly sloping one way or the other, which would be very uh, visually distracting. Uh, I composed this probably about two o'clock in the afternoon and just left my camera there and waited for good light. And so I left ample space up top here for the, you know, just in case those clouds lit up, because when I set it up, there was fairly overcast skies. Um, 
not really overcast, but there's just lots of high clouds that kind of filled the sky. And I knew that they had probably thinned out as sunset approached. And sure enough, they did, but I had just enough clouds back there to light up and left enough rooms there, so some breathing space, uh, just kind of balance the whole composition. So I'm really happy the way that this turned out. It's a good example of centering a subject to kind of portray a mood to give a sense of calm in this case, especially when paired with this really nice calm light. So definitely very happy with the way that that one turned out. Uh, next, let's talk about this photo. So this one was taken in Zion. Um, it was on a day where I spent a lot of time just kind of wandering around looking for subjects. I really couldn't find anything that caught my eye until eventually I just took my camera, left it in my truck, and just went out for a wander along a creek. And it did not take me long in order to find this scene. So sometimes leaving the camera behind can actually help out a little bit. Uh, so in this case, I found this really cool patch of frozen water. Uh, the ice was decently thick, it's probably about that thick. And it was kind of nestled in this area with these like fallen reeds and stuff where it kind of created this little pool when the water levels were a little bit higher. And this area stays in shade pretty much all day long. I don't think it ever sees any sun because it's kind of deep in a canyon. Um, but as the temperature changes and water kind of flows in, uh, there had been times in the past where the ice had melted a little bit, then it refroze. So this is actually one solid surface of ice, but you can see how this area here had kind of melted, broken apart, and then it was frozen back in place. So it's a really fascinating subject to work with. It's also quite difficult to work with because my camera is angled downward, and I'm trying to make sure I keep everything in focus. This is where I use a little front tilt to kind of keep the plane of focus following the ice there, which thankfully is a nice flat plane to work with. Um, but I love this line, I really love the line. And even though I typically go for a horizontal composition first, I knew right away this would be vertical because of this emphasis right here. So this emphasis really makes it a little better suited for a vertical. Um, but I felt this was definitely a very experimental composition when I set it up. And it was actually really fun to do because um, my camera isn't just looking straight down. Um, there were some distracting elements kind of up here that are just out of view in that corner. There's another band of this black. And it's just out of view. I was trying my hardest to keep that out of the frame because I knew that that would be a distraction. So what I actually did is, not only was I shooting the camera like this, I also tilted the camera a little bit like this. And by doing so, I was able to scoot that little area out of the composition. And even though this isn't really looking down, you know, nice and true at the subject, I was able to kind of make it all work to keep everything in focus and make it kind of read relatively right. Um, when I was staring at the ground glass trying to figure out this composition, I'll show you kind of what it was I was looking at. So I was paying a lot of attention to the edges. So for me, this area up top, this is a really important area as that line kind of leads in. Um, the closer it gets to that corner, the more of a potential distraction it can be. Um, and so I was trying to keep a good healthy distance right in here. I was also keeping a good healthy distance for this straight edge right there. So it kind of boxes this corner in a little bit in a way where I'm trying to make it um, not distracting. And I think just a little bit out of view to the top of this, I think it actually kind of curved at an angle. And so I was trying to keep that line nice and straight as it entered the composition. The other area is taking really, I'm you know, paying a really close look at it was right over here because this area over here as a dark line kind of curves around. I didn't want that to be too close to the edge because then it can create sort of a visual distraction over there. And then finally, I was paying close attention to this area over here, but this was a little bit less critical. I was a little concerned about this being top heavy because the business end of this photo is up top, this whole dark line entering there, exiting here. I was a little worried that it might feel a little empty down here. But when I was setting up this composition, I didn't really notice these finer, kind of smaller details um, being these main lines right here. Um, and also the fact that it's a little bit lighter over here as well. And that helps to sort of build a little more visual interest in that area. So I think it all kind of works, the eye kind of flowing through. And what was really cool about this, this is a, a drum scan of the film. So this is a 300 megapixel image. Um, but I was able to use all the camera movements in order to get things nice and sharp here um, where you can look at all the little details there, uh, which is one of the really fun things about shooting a large format. Uh, so this is why I definitely plan on printing, printing pretty big. But it was definitely a composition I felt was rather experimental. But for me, those are sometimes the most fun. But again, it's kind of paying close attention to the edges because that's really where the mistakes have a greater consequence at times. 
But I want to thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you around next week.